Here we are in the greenhouse the last weekend in January, and that's Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Hey. Um, what we're doing now is we're going to show you our soil mix that we use for general seed starting and uh, how we do that because it's in the mid-30s outside the greenhouse uh, and at <laughs> night it's going down into the low 20s but, but if you look look how warm the greenhouse is staying just with the poly over the cattle panel that Charlie constructed for us so it's staying at that temperature just with the poly over wire and when Charlie constructed this it was level but we've got one side sinking hmm. so what we have to do is come up with a way to level the seed starting trays because it's really important uh, for the water distribution when you water it to be even and not drown one side of the tray and uh, put the other in a drought situation. So Charlie, forever the engineer, uh, puts down the styrofoam to help hold in the heat and then lays the heating mat over the top. And as you can see, that is a lot better than it was. So it's not absolutely perfect, but the incline is not at the point where it's uh, going to really hurt anything. I, I, we mentioned in a, in a previous video that um, that we repurpose things. They don't throw anything away. And some people would say, oh my gosh, these people are pack rats. <laughs> and I guess we are. You need another one? One more piece. But by not throwing out little pieces of fence picket, we are able to do things like this, which is leveling that heating mat. So that's pretty stable. Yeah. You know, put that back at the wall. There you go. So Charlie is going to reset the heating pad, which we want to be set actually at um, 60 degrees for most vegetables. So can you do that for us, baby? I'm hot. You're hot. Yeah, you are. So set. You want it? I'll give it, set it at 65, that way it'll fluctuate between okay. 60 and 65, hopefully. I'll do this one. Okay, there we go. So, now set. 65. I don't know if you can 65. see that. Can you show us the end of the probe, hun? That goes probe. down and it'll tell us. It'll go actually into, yeah, you can't the, in, the into, into the tray uh, to tell us what the tray is at. Or in her pot, but generally inside the tray. so we can monitor the heat. So now I'm going to show you my mixing tub and my process for filling my uh, cell packs. And when we're starting just regular vegetables, I use a combination of Pro Mix with mycorrhizae in it, which are, uh, what are mycorrhizae, Charlie? You're the mushroom expert. I root fungi. It's root fungi, which uh, takes care of harmful bacteria and actually stimulates root growth when the seedlings start to sprout. But for starting seeds you want a lighter mix and the Pro Mix is based on a recipe that I use from scratch which is a third compost, a third uh, perlite or vermiculite um, and a third peat moss. So we want that to be a little bit lighter to actually start seasoning because those roots need to put their put their roots out. But it's got enough natural food in it, if you will, so that we don't add anything to it. If you get your nitrogen too high, you'll burn the young roots. So 
we wait for things to start coming up before we start feeding it. So today I've got, I filled a five gallon bucket. And we've got the thirds mixture and I'm going to add about half a bucket of vermiculite. This is vermiculite. about half a bucket. Now this has been pre-moistened. I mean, it's just something about getting your hands in the soil that is so satisfying. There have been studies that say it promotes mental health, although you can't tell that with me. So I get this pretty well mixed in. As uniform as possible. You can see it's moist enough so it kind of holds together. That's about where you want it. Maybe a little bit moisture, but that's fine for our purposes today. Then I, I go ahead and put my cells in these little trays that I got on Amazon. This is, these are fantastic seed sprouting tools. And then it's easy. Put your soil. And scrape across the top. I don't tamp it hard. I just tamp it down to try to get rid of any air pockets that might be down in there. That's ready. Oh, it, if you're like me, when you actually go like to one of the big box stores and and buy starts, um, let's say they have something that you didn't start in the spring, some of us will pilfer their <laughs> their trays. But they really are kind of flimsy. So this is something I ordered. It's extra heavy duty. And it'll stand up for years. I don't expect this to, to break up on me for the next maybe five years. And it's already been with us too. So if you look at this. We'll put three seed trays down. And then we're going to come back with smaller pots along the margin. Go ahead and turn it off. You know I upcycle things that come in. I upcycle just about everything. And this is packing that came in with something we ordered or bought. And in order to keep um, pots from turning over, I stuff them between the smaller pots and the size of the the sides of the tray. So one thing that's really important is uh, being able to label what you're started. And I have found that. Um, these labels that I put in the garden last year, I, when I planted the individual plants, I kept their, their tag with them and intended to use them year after year. But some sort of creature has been carrying them off. I don't know what. But here in the greenhouse, to keep track of what we're planting, we're going to make 
the labels for each cell. Wild Boar Farms, they have some really unique uh, tomato seeds. And I have to, I have to take off my mask because uh, I'm not working with the vermiculite. But the mask is going to go back on when, um, when I start messing with the pepper seeds. I've got a variety of tomato here that's called Dancing with Smurfs. I can't wait to see what that is. That's why. This is Black Beauty, and it's a tomato that is kind of a blackish color and with a little bit of a red belly. Um, I don't tolerate the pure red pepper. Uh, the pure. I don't tolerate the pure red tomatoes anymore. Not so well with my acid reflux, but I found that. Green tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, and the black tomatoes uh, don't give me the acid reflux. So if you have that problem, you may want to play with some of the other varieties of tomatoes. And uh, the only thing about the black ones is they take a long time to mature between blooming and setting fruit. We did indigo rose last year, and it was... We put them in the ground. When did we put them in the ground, Charlie? About May? And it wasn't until the end of July until we had anything to eat. So how do I plant them? Maybe Charlie can show you. Put a few seeds in my hand. And I actually put one or two on the surface of each cell. I don't re recommend using all your seed. You can save some for next year. Seeds are viable for several years. Don't do what I just did and put seeds where you're not gonna, you don't want them. And I'm gonna make a tag. Beauty, tomato, today's date is the 30th, and then I'll put however many I planted, 3, 6, 9, 12. I'll put that where you can actually read the tag. Actually, that's going to, before the sprouts come up, that's going to be uh, pretty too tall for that. So, I've got the seeds down, and then what I do is I take a little bit of soil, and I put it over the top. Okay, so I take a little bit of the pre-moistened soil. I sprinkle it over the seed I put down. The trick is you want the seed buried twice the width of the seed. So some of the teeny little seeds like the radishes and um, some of the flower seed and the mizuna will do right on the surface and just kind of, and basil will just kind of kickle it in and just do very light dusting of soil. And then you just kind of tuck it down. That was Black Beauty. I use these little pump sprayers um, to water, to, to top water. I'll use a hand pitcher to bottom water by lifting the cells up and putting maybe a third water there. But I'll come through with a pump sprayer, first of all with rainwater once I get everything seeded and moisten the top. But these are fairly inexpensive at Walmart. So 
I'm going to be seeding now red Mizuna, yellow Calendula, gotta have my Swiss charm. Acre Creek, when you order from them, sells you, sends you free stuff. So I've got dill. Salad Burnett. The bigger pots are going to do artichokes. Do some French sorrel. Anti Sisok, which is a short lived perennial. Different types of basil. The bigger pots are getting different types of squash. Early squash. Cucumbers and borage. Once I get it all planted out, I'll, I'll film what I've, what I've done. Okay, it took a little while, but we've got just about everything we brought out we chose the other day planted. I've got to find um, some Italian climbing zucchini that we believed the seller last year that we had time to plant it in July and it it came up, it climbed, it bloomed, but it didn't produce. So I want to start it. I want to start it here tomorrow probably and uh, in the empty pots we have them back here. So now that you've seen me seed in or plant my seeds for the first wave of the cold, colder weather plants, uh, you'll have an understanding of how we do it here at, uh, at our homestead. And if you like what you saw, I sure would appreciate if you would uh, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit the, the black bell so that you get all your update notifications that we've done another video. And uh, give me a thumbs up, will ya? Make some comments, make them nice, and uh, we can chat back and forth about uh, any questions you may have uh, about starting your seeds for your coal crops. Until next time, see ya.